Hello, Miguel from Grumo here, and I'm going to show you how to shuffle a list and iterate through the shuffle list. So here we have the sample final application, and we got eight items that we can shuffle clicking the shuffle button, as you can see here. And then we can iterate through them by clicking the go button, and then we can click next, and we can iterate through the shuffle list of eight items. Now, this is very useful. For example, if you want to randomize the questions of a quiz, and then you want to iterate through them. Now, Glide already comes with the ability to shuffle uh, inline list. So if I select the inline list component here and I go to uh, options and sort, you can see there is an option called randomly. And you can do that. The problem is that this doesn't help us with if we want to iterate through each component individually. So let me undo this, right? So in order to do that, First, we have to find the index number of each of the components. So if we go to the things table inside the Glide data editor, we can see here the eight elements. And then we have to generate the actual index value of each row, right? So it goes from zero to seven because arrays start with the index zero, not one. And the way we're finding the index zero is basically we're using a lookup column that is self-referencing the entire things table, in this case, the row ID back into each row. Now inside this cell, we have the entire list of row IDs for the entire table. That's an array. And then what we can do is try to find the row ID of that row inside the array with all the row IDs, and that will give us the index value of that row which we can see here, obviously, as we want it, is from zero to seven. Great. Now that we have that, we can pull all these values from zero to seven inside the user's table simply by using a join list that is going to look at the order index that we generated and separated by a comma. And then we have the list of all the questions numbers sequentially. Great. Now that we have that, we can shuffle the order. Now this is the tricky part because Glide doesn't have a formula to shuffle a string or an array by default, but you, we can use a JavaScript component column here. And basically we will copy and paste in this formula. What basically this formula is doing is randomizing this string. Perfect. Now that we've randomized this string, we can assign this string to the actual items inside the things table. So now that we pull the order shuffled from the user table, we can convert this into an array using the split text column type. And now that we have this array, we can generate the new order. So basically what we're going to do here is use the find element index from the shuffle array. And basically we're gonna find the first index of an element in an array. And we're gonna try to find the value that is inside the in ordered index column. So for example, the value zero is on the sixth position here, right? And the new order would be six. The value one is on the first position. So that's zero, one position. The value two is in the zero position of this array. So that two is in the, as you can see on the zero position. This way we're generating a completely new random order for our list that we can use now to iterate through the list. Now there's one caveat here and is that we cannot use the value that is being shuffled from the JavaScript function. Because as you're going to see here, every time I do something on the table, that value gets uh, modified. So that JavaScript function is ex executed anytime there's any changes on the table. So what I'm going to do is store the value here permanently using a user specific column, right? And basically when I press the shuffle button, what I'm doing here with this custom action is to basically write the value of the shuffled order into the user specific shuffled column. That way it doesn't change every time that we are modifying or interacting with the app. 
okay? So inside the things table, I'm not pulling the JavaScript output of the shuffled order. I am pulling the stored value because I know this one is not changing once it's been generated, once I click the shuffle button. So you can see here that it says 245 and here it says 213, but inside the things table, I'm pulling the value 213. In other words, the value from the order shuffle stored user specific column, okay? That's just to make sure that this randomized order is not changing every single time that we interact with the table. So once it's set, it's set for the reminder of the, the currently logged in user session. Okay, now that we have the new order, iterating through it is a very simple because we can click go here and basically uh, the next button has the logic that increments the value of the order, right? So basically if the current order is less than the total items that we're gonna increment by one, the current order uh, column inside the user's table and if it's bigger, in other words, if we finish iterating through the eight items inside the things table, we're going to take them back and say completed. And you can see how that works, because if I click next, 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 next on the, uh, the last item, when I click next, it's just a way of going back to the original screen and saying that you've completed. And here, so just to test that again, you can see that Hobrock's uh, item is, is number one now, but you can see how now it's become, it's gone all the way to position number six here. And we can keep uh, shuffling. So if this was a quiz and these were the questions, now when we click go, every time that we iterate through these items have been, uh, it's a completely randomized order. So hopefully that helps you randomize and shuffle lists that you want users to iterate through. And uh, if you want to make a copy of this app template, just go to grumo.com slash shuffle app. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.